Hello everyone, in this final video of my Bebop 2 camera experiments I will share with you what I discovered um, that could be some possible causes of the image degradation of um, the footage you are receiving from some of your Bebop 2s. So there were two things that affected focus and one thing that affected the entire the overall image, uh, creating a lot of artifacts with image noise. I will start with the image noise and um, in theory any image sensor uh, when it gets really hot, the hotter it gets uh, the more noise it creates or the more little dots you see or more artifacts being created within the video or the picture. I notice this as well when I do photography and I'm pushing my ISOs and also doing video and long recordings with the camera giving me overheat warnings and I notice towards the end before the overheat the image is um, very grainy or noisy so using that same theory to apply to this I found that the heat was not being transferred very well from the sensor to uh, the frame the frame is very light, I think it's a composite or aluminum, and it is very, um, very conductive. But what was happening was the heat from the sensor, this is the sensor, the silver plate here is just the sensor. So that's a stainless steel plate, and this is plastic. So the heat being transferred to the plastic is not so much a problem because it wouldn't really travel that far if it's in the cold. But the heat was not being transferred onto this frame which acts as a heat sink. So to rectify this, and I was surprised why they didn't put a thermal pad behind the sensor when it was mounted to the frame. So initially the sensor itself got really hot to the touch and the the heat sink or the mounting bracket was not hot so this uh, got me to the conclusion that heat wasn't being transferred and dissipating uh, fast enough and that would um, allow the sensor to get really hot over a few minutes so what I did was I put thermal paste between the sensor and the mounting bracket or the heat sink and this was pretty um, a common sense sort of discovery because at the back of the sensor there's a square groove where you usually if you see that on um, a transistor or, or other sensors there's a square groove and there's usually a thermal pad placed in that or uh, thermal paste, thermal grease placed in that before it mounts to the back plate or a heat sink within the camera body. So applying a bit of thermal paste in between the sensor, the sensor and uh, the body when you mount it fixes this this problem where your image degrades in quality over time sorry about the focus so that would that's a little tip and uh, it's very inexpensive to get the uh, thermal paste thermal paste is uh, quite cheap and you don't need any high grade stuff any any sort of thermal paste with good um, conductivity um, a heat conductivity would be good to transfer the heat so after applying the thermal paste and powering the camera on for about 20 minutes, the, the bracket got really hot and the sensor was cool. This area was cool and the bracket was hot. So this meant that the heat was being transferred out to the bracket. So how this um, affects the uh, video quality in, in the cold is it regulates the temperature between the sensor and the elements. So as these are being uh, rapidly cooled by the ambient temperature, flying in cold conditions, um, the back plate of this sensor or the front of the sensor is extremely hot. So when you put extremely hot and extremely cold together with glass, <coughs> this creates a bit of phase, uh, sorry, haze, and uh, somewhat fogs up your windscreen. So to be able to balance the temperature and dissipate the heat fast, I think this would help with the um, uh, two things, the, the image noise and also the, the uh, sort of degradation of uh, image quality in the cold because of the rapid temperature differences. So this is just uh, to help with dissipating heat and regulating the sensor temperature close to ambient. Moving on to the other two which was the focusing. 
So one of the things I noticed immediately was there were two problems with the focusing. One was the entire image was out of focus. If you have an overall image out of focus, removing the, the lens assembly and sliding it in and out or closer or further away from the image sensor, this would correct the overall image sharpness, so your focus. So moving it in and out corrects the image sharpness. And I know I'm gonna get questions, how did I take this off? Well, if you would see, I have a few uh, scuff marks along here, sorry, along here, along the rim. And that's because I couldn't get the adhesive out using heat. And I didn't wanna heat it too much because it's a plastic construction, it's not metal. And I don't know the quality of the adhesive holding the elements inside, if they use adhesive. So what I did was, I took a hacksaw blade and gently scrubbed along the edges to to sort of rid the um, or cut the adhesive that was holding that on. And after a few scrapes around, going around, round, round, you have to be very patient and do that um, slowly, so you don't cut too much. And eventually, you will reach the bottom, and the complete lens assembly will be able to um, detach and that is what you get. So to be able to put this back inside I had to cut some tape and thread it around here to increase the diameter of the barrel to fit inside the barrel of the, um, the sensor housing. So I had to match the diameter so it'll go in and have a snug fit to be able to move in and out and be as center as possible within the um, the um, sensor housing. So that was uh, to correct the overall sharpness of focus of the entire image. Now there will be cases where you are blurry on the outer edges of the image. That is because of the front element. Now we will take this apart and the front element, how you correct that is if your front element is not sitting parallel to the base of this um, lens construction, this lens um, barrel, then you would get portions of the image that is in focus and portions of the image that are not in focus. So in the case that you have that, you will need to remove the front element and remove all the adhesive from the entire thing and reset the front element on the front. So that's the front element. So remove all the adhesive around. Remove all the adhesive around here. And it's around the little lens, the element. And that's it, it comes apart, you can dig it out. So you level it on and make sure it's as parallel to this as possible. And then you can then work on your overall focusing. So the overall focusing is once this is centered and you put this back into the sensor chamber or barrel and then move this in and out to regain your overall focus of the image. So in the case that you might have just one corner of the image that is blurry but everything else is in focus, don't move the lens uh, forward or backwards, keep it in the same place, but simply rotate the blurred corner to the top. So you just turn this. What that does is that moves that section to um, 
either the top or the bottom. Usually I'm going to recommend the top because no one pans 90 degrees to the top. They usually, uh, sorry, no one tilts 90 degrees to the top. They usually tilt bottom to see the ground when they're flying. So to move that um, out of focus area to the top, and which is usually out of the crop, so you never see it anyways. So that is how you get rid of um, that problem if you only have a small portion of your image that is uh, out of focus or blurry and the rest of it is in focus. All right, I hope um, that this video helps you with your research and I think I'm done with this experiment for now. I'm not going to glue them in because I will definitely try other lenses later on, but for now I'm putting this project on hold because it's uh, time consuming and I need to finish the other experiment which is the batteries. Until next time, fly safe and God bless.